Hello. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, drawing realistic style manga like um, Takuji, Takuji uh, Kawano, Alvin Lee, and um, Takao Saito. Um, this was a question that I was asked again by one of my patrons, and I'm going to be talking about it today. But before I start, hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on the Simpsons television show. I've been working on the show for over 20 years. Um, this is uh, uh, an interesting topic, uh, and one of the it, it's it's a little bit difficult to talk about because the term realistic manga is in the realistic. Um, and then the styles are not so realistic. Um, it, they, they, they're, they're naturalistic. Uh, when I think realistic, well, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Before I begin to talk about style at all, um, I just wanted to talk about uh, previous uh, videos that I've done. Uh, I've already talked about developing a manga uh, a style in manga and Western animation. So uh, you could look at that video. I'll put the link. I have also talked about uh, developing a unique drawing style. And I've talked about um, uh, drawing character designs, design pointers, which w in which I also talk about um, design, uh, which I talk about uh, styles in that too. Um, and I also have talked about uh, style versus versatility in art. So all these things, um, I'll have links to these videos, but I've gone over these um, this topic before. So I just thought I'd let you know that. Uh, I have covered many of these things already, so I'm not going to cover what I usually say. Well, uh, I will say what I usually say, but now I'm going to actually give you practical advice on how to apply what I usually say to style, okay? Because I think it's really important. Now, um, what is it that I usually say? What I usually say is, you got to learn to draw. That's it. You have to be. Uh, you have to learn your academics, your drawing academics. Uh, the, so the la in the last video, I talked about uh, figure going to figure drawing, drawing from life, as in going out on the street and start sketching people, drawing from life. Uh, not just from photographs. If you're going to figure draw, draw from life in figure drawing as well. Not just from photos. Uh, learn your anatomy. Uh, learn to draw naturalistic, which is another way of saying realistic. Um, <coughs> if you want in any kind of way to be stylized, um, yes, study cartooning and that sort of thing. Absolutely, you have to learn that. But also draw learn to draw naturalistic as well and copy your favorite artists people you want to draw like okay now a lot of this kind of all has to go together and um, uh, perhaps I should even say one more thing which would be um, learn design uh, because design is style style comes from design so let me add that one in here. Learn design. Learn design principles. That's actually even better said. Uh, I do go over uh, design principles in my in my website, thedrawingwebsite.com. I will talk about it later. But for right now, uh, this is really what you really need to focus on. If you want to start getting good, if you want to get a style, you have to learn the drawing fundamentals. And they have to be uh, in your brain 
Uh, and, and this is specifically if you want to learn how to draw uh, really well, like the examples that we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to be talking about Takuji Kawano, Alvin Lee, and Takao Saito. Now, could you, uh, uh, Takuji Kawano, uh, let's start looking at the artwork here. That's why I had brought it up. So, so we've got, this is uh, <coughs> Takuji. Uh, you're going to have to excuse me. I've got a cold and I'm going to be, hopefully I won't be coughing over a lot of the stuff. Okay, so uh, this is what it, I suppose um, is called realistic. I would say uh, it's very naturalistic. There's nothing real about this. <laughs> uh, it's very, very naturalistic, but this is not realistic. Um, this is really cartoony and really well designed. So this guy, he's got a very beautiful, beautiful naturalistic style. And I would also consider this very comic book, very Western looking artwork. It has a touch of ma uh, manga anime style in it, absolutely. But for the most part, it's a it's slightly it's it's fairly western there is a, a manga flair to it but it wouldn't be uh something that you that'd be out of place necessarily like in a in a uh western comic book style same with him same with alvin he uh his style is again very a naturalistic, but it's very uh, designy. It's, it's got a very in, beautiful design style. Um, very pushed. This is not realistic. This is very naturalistic, but it's very exaggerated, very designed. And I would say that this is far more influenced by Western artwork than uh, manga. There is manga in here, but it's very Western. Look at these arms. They're amazing. I'm going to talk about how to get, how to be able to do this, um, especially because that's what this is all about. So here we've got another drawing of his, and here's another one. It's amazing. Um, let me really quickly uh, point out that a lot of this, even though it's incredibly well drafted, uh, a lot of it has to do with the painting itself, the painting what's going on with the painting here i'm still uh learning to uh paint myself so i won't be covering painting and all that stuff when i talk about this stuff okay so now i'm gonna this is neither none of the care the people that were asked about but i'm including this because i want you to notice this is joe mad and his style is exactly this this is the same this is definitely in the same um in the same school of of drawing as these other guys okay so that's why i say that this the these styles could be uh very comic book western comic book stuff because look at the look at these guys' faces. Do you see what I'm saying? So Joe Mad's really influenced by these guys. So this is what I would consider very stylized, naturalistic cartoons kind of it's more comic booky more comic booky style. This is what that is. Um, and after all, manga are, are comics, you know. So now let's take a look at uh, the artwork for the last person on the list.
we're talking about Takao Saito of Golgo 13. So his style is definitely, I would consider, a little bit more quote-unquote realistic. Look at these bats. It's still stylized, though. This is very much still in the tradition of Tezuka because he used to also do very similar artwork like this. And then I've also included this. This is what I would absolutely consider realistic manga. Lone Wolf and Cub. This stuff is just... This is what came to mind when I was thinking realistic. The other stuff is a little bit more pushed and cartoony. This is definitely not. <laughs> so... Um, When I think realistic, quote-unquote realistic, this is what I think of. Lone wolf and cub. It's beautiful, like, like stuff like this. Like I said, this is much more stylized, much more pushed. Much more in the wheelhouse of this. Okay. All right, so let's say you want to draw like these guys, okay? And who doesn't want to draw like them? I mean, they're amazing. So let's get to it. Um, I say figure drawing and studying and all that other stuff. Uh, let's get practical. Go to Amazon and buy yourself the Bridgman's book. Uh, Bridgman's uh, Complete Guide to, to uh, Drawing from Life. You got to buy this book. Um, and it wouldn't hurt to buy the little ones too. Like this this one. Let's see if we have some pictures here. Yep. Okay. And then what I want you to do when you buy these, and this one too. Absolutely. The head one. Oh my gosh. Fantastic. Some of this stuff is already in the bit in the Bridgman book that I just pointed out. There's going to be a, bit, a link below so you can go straight to this on the uh, um, but um, so there's already all, uh, the entire body is already broken down into 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 uh, chapters here, but for some reason the the head drawing book the 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 head draw the eye chapter in this is only like two pages and it's ridiculous. Um, you really need more, and if you buy this book, it gives you a few more pages of eyes. And the reason why I I say that is because um, the entire reason to have to buy these books is to copy them. And by copying, I mean from cover to cover. I'm going to give you an example right now. I have the book in my hand. And I'm going to copy some eyes. No. Yeah. I'll start with some eyes. So, you look at the artwork here. And I know what you're saying. I want to learn how to draw like those guys that I, that uh, that you just showed. I do not want to learn how to draw like Bridgman because I don't like Bridgman's style, right? And that's what you're saying because you don't understand what I'm saying. You don't get that what you're draw what you what you're learning to do when copying Bridgman is not copying the superficial style of the way he draws. And this is where beginning artists always get caught up. They 
uh, the reason why they're always asking about style is because they don't understand that the fundamentals, this stuff that uh, you're learning here from Bridgman is more important than the style. It may not be more important than the style for the everyday audience who wants to spend money and only wants to uh, buy your your, um, your work because they're only interested in the eye candy. You got to stop thinking like like that. That's the way like amateurs think. That's the way that the general audience thinks. You got to start thinking outside of that 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 you have to get out of that mindset. Start thinking like an artist. You got to start thinking about structure and construction. Let's see, this is messed up. This I and this I should be on the same plane. It's not what it's, I'm not focusing here. This should be straighter. Yeah, so uh, copying this stuff, you notice how I'm, how bec when I messed up, I went back and I'm trying to fix it, so I'm actually matching what's going on and what is going on. This is the lid, the pupil, giving them thickness. giving them thickness, going in here. This is, notice right here, it's block, it's a block. Notice it's not this. Notice how it's, it's, a, it's got a side here and a side plane, it's got a front plane. It's, the eyelids have a thickness. See, notice this is a muscle here. Bet you you won't ever th think about it. You never think about it. When you're drawing Bridgman, he's, he's going to show you these things. He's going to show you these. He's going to show you the, the plane of the nose and how everything fits in. In a face. Okay? Um... Let me find another one. I'm going to draw a head. And this is just a block. This is the Bridgman blocks that I love so much. This is the forehead. And then he's got like the cheeks, the cheekbone right here. the front plane of the face. This, all of this that's going on that I'm doing right here in by copying this stuff applies directly, directly to the stuff that's being done by these artists that we just looked at. And I'll show you how in a moment.
Drawing Bridgman actually helps you explain what they know that you don't. Because Bridgman is the one that's going to teach it to you. Okay, so there's this going on. <sighs> this is a great face. There's this face right here. I'm giving myself guidelines so I don't mess up the copy. I could still mess it up, it's not guaranteed, but So right now the book I'm using is the is the little the little head book, the one that I that, that I was pointing out just a little while ago. Because it's got a lot of really great faces to copy. Not so much the the big one. The big one doesn't have as many faces, but it's got other stuff that's really good. Now here's the stuff that I really like. It's just like these. The way that he defines the sides of the pl the face and these chiseled there's this plane here and then there's this again with this muscle remember that when the, from the other eyeball drawing he even broke this down into a weird triangular All shapes weird. So this eye is, let's see, this eye is off. I see. It's hard to, it, sometimes it's a little bit difficult because the drawings are so sketchy that you're copying from. Reproduction could be a little better. Okay. So you've got this copy from a Bridgman drawing again. Um, let me switch books. And I'm going to really, really quickly do an arm. Especially this one, I love this one. Oh man, Bridgman, so good, it's so good to draw to sketch from this guy. Um, so he's got this arm drawing. 
I'm just going to draw like really quickly like a shape, a tube, because that's kind of the shape it is in here. And this is the arm, the Bridgman arm. And this is really a really good, good one, really good example of why Bridgman is so handy. Besides the fact that those those faces, I am getting to a point here. I, I am going to make a point. When, if, okay, when, I'm not going to say if you get the books, I'm going to say when you get the books, when you get the books, open the books up, if you really, really, really want to learn to draw like those guys, I mean really, like that's your thing, if you really want to learn how to draw like those guys, open up the Bridgman book. Start with the very first drawings that you see and copy those drawings. And then when you're done with copying every single one of those drawings in that page, go to the next page, copy every single one of those drawings in the next page. And then when you're done with that, copy every single one of those in the next page, et cetera, et cetera. I'm running out of room. In other words, copy the book cover to cover. Copy every single drawing in the Bridgman books. Just do it. Don't ask why. Don't say, I don't want to draw like Bridgman style. I don't want to get Bridgman style. I want to. No. Don't do that. Think and draw. Just do what I'm telling you. Draw every single drawing in the book. Just copy all the drawings in the stinking book. By the time you come out the other end, your your knowledge of this stuff, the way that, that, that he constructs stuff so solid, is going to translate. You're going to look at the stuff, the, these manga artists and, the, and, 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 and Joe Mad and all these guys, and then you're going to go, oh, that's the Bridgman thing. And that's the Bridgman thing. I'm not saying that they copied Bridgman. I'm saying that they basically, they're still using all these Bridgman things. Maybe they did copy Bridgman as well. But here's the thing. Okay, so I just finished drawing this, this arm, okay? And I want to show you something. Where is it? Where is it? Dude, there. See? Okay. Darn. I'm trying to grab this. Where'd it go? All right. Behave you. Do you see what I'm talking about? Do you see that? Look, look at this arm. Look at this arm. And look at Bridgman's arm. Here, let me. Yeah? Right? Same it's going to be the same thing with this arm. 
It's the same thing. You look at the Bridgman arm. It's it's just, oh my gosh. You guys, you got to copy Bridgman. Okay, um let me Again, let's let's take a look at Ah oh man, I need a I need a better I need a good face, like a good one of these chunky chunky faces. Joe Mad's got chunky faces. Come on, Joe. Give me a chunky face. Okay. Ah, oh, Captain. Is it chunky? All right. Let's see. Can I drag this in here? No, you're not gonna let me. Come on, man. Do it. Not gonna let me do it. Okay, let's try something else. There we go. All righty. Actually, We got the Bridgman face that I just finished. So let's take a look at Joe Mad's faces. And let's see if we could use the Bridgman face. And the Bridgman brow. Oh man. I, I, it, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to... But sometimes these are these character. It's a little bit trickier to see what I'm talking about here. Okay, let me isolate. All right. Okay. So, um, let's say we've got this. Now, I didn't draw the nose from Bridgman and all these other things. So, let's just focus on the eye. See here? Because we've got this eye going kind of happening here, right? He's kind of squinting. So you really can't see, but see this here, this that's going on here is right there. He just has like this exaggerated brow. This right here, up here is the is the brow. So it's already right there. You've got this going on. You've got this going on. Okay. Um, you've got this block here. This block, see how this, that's this block here. That's what 
this is what it represents. This here, do you see it? Look, see right there? This right there is right, that's where that, see? Do you see it? This here. It's right, look! He's, it's right there. <laughs> this here is a really simplified version. There's more stuff going on. Bridgman actually goes far deeper than this, but this. Now he go. It, there is, you know, Bridgman kind of goes a little lumpy, bumpy here. Don't worry about that. This is a lot more stylized here, but so you've got this shape in here. And when you look at the eye, I already drew all over all this stuff. But that here isn't here. This stuff going on. He's he's angry. He so a lot of this stuff is hidden behind the brow because of his expression. But it's there. Do you, do you see? This is not just... It's, it's there. This is, this is the reason why I keep harping on this stuff. In all this stuff, you're, you're going to see um, very Bridgman's kind of thing. See, see, there it is. See right there? Do you see that lump? And the way that the tear dot, and then you see in the eyes, you see how there's a thickness there? And there's that lump, right? And there's those lines again, like that side of the face and that, that goes down, you know. <sighs> Same here, this guy. Let's zoom in. Oh, that's as, <laughs> that's as far as it zooms. Um, yeah, this guy, he's probably really good to have done too. Same thing. All that stuff. See, there's the little lump. The nose, the, the Bridgman noses are amazing. I, I mean, you, you start learning, you start copying Bridgman noses, oh, you're going to learn how to draw noses so well like right away like it, there's just so they're so faceted and um and it's so clear when you when you when you draw uh uh when you start copying Bri the noses that Bridgman uh uh has created uh, let's see if I can cuz I want to show an example of of the Bridgman nose, and then I want you to look at uh, these guys. Okay, here, this is a good one. So there's this drawing of a, and I'm using the small orange head book, but the the big one, the big book, also has this stuff. So. Uh, it, <coughs> in a lot of ways, I think it simplifies a little bit more. Well, no, I I, I tend to start with a shape when I draw a nose. I, this is this is the the nose shape I try I, I usually use. So I'm gonna do that here as a guide to copy Bridgman, because then he gets all lumpy bumpy. So, but the lumpy bumps are what help. So you've got this, there's like a shape here like this. 
I'm telling you. I'm telling you. When I started copying Bridgman, so much stuff started making sense. So many styles were at my fingertips. Because he, Bridgman is really teaching you the fundamentals. In the, uh, the he's, he's, he's breaking these complex things into these, um, these sculptural drawings that if you memorize his structures um, and then just apply them to your drawings when um, when it's time for you to draw from your imagination from your head oh my gosh it just it just opens everything up it really really does and even when you're drawing from your imagination I always have the Bridgman book open so you can make sure that you're Applying the the formula structures correctly. Let me see if this lines up. It does not. Ooh, my copy's off. Trying to get this back into some kind of semblance of control here. This is far, far higher up. There it is. That's where it is. Okay, so we've got this really complex Bridgman nose here. Let me clear up this plane here. Like this. Like this. This is a corner. Like that. There we go. All right. So we've got this Bridgman nose that I think actually goes here. All right. Now, maybe we can go back to this guy here and take a look. Are you seeing it already? You should be able to. It's like stinking magic, right? Do you see it? That's right there. Look at. Do you see it? Right there.
see? Do you see? This is what I'm talking about. This is why I keep harping on learn to draw the fundamentals. Learn to draw the fundamentals. Learn to draw the fundamentals. You want to learn to draw like these guys? Learn to draw the fundamentals. That's basically what you've got to do. Okay? Copy Bridgman. Learn the fundamentals of constructing the figure. Okay, so let me go back to my pointers, which are here. And this one. Go figure draw. Draw from life, because once you start learning the Bridgman stuff, then you're going to want to apply it observing life and all that stuff. The anatomy. Yeah, learn anatomy from Bridgman. You can do that from Bridgman. You can see how he breaks anatomy down. Okay? Learn to draw naturalistic. You'll do that by copying Bridgman. Copy your favorite artists, people who want, you want to draw like. If you learn the Bridgman stuff and start applying it, then you can, when you copy your favorite artists, you can start using the Bridgman formulas on them, and suddenly it'll be easy to understand what your favorite artists are doing when they draw the characters. Okay, so uh, it it just opens things up so much. Okay, and then learn design, like learn design. That's not, Bridgman's got nothing there. Like, <laughs> okay, learn design. Um, tell you what, why don't you go to my website, um, and you could learn design at my website, thedrawingwebsite.com. There, I do talk about design. Um, I also talk about um. Well, here, see design. I um. Uh, and th this, see here, this is my modified version of Bridgman stuff. Uh, this is how uh, you apply design to, say, the Bridgman um, head construction. Uh, this is how you uh, are able to take a, a, like a Bridgman-like uh, head structure and then mess around with it so that you can do these hyper-realistic-looking crazy guys so that your stuff ends up looking, well, not like these guys, but a little bit more like like these guys. Where, like, look how smooshed up his faces are and stuff like that. Um, and, and how, like, completely, like, you know, do you see how this is all just smushed? And uh, this is a little bit more normal looking. Uh, yeah, but see, look at his, all, his entire face is up on the top and then maybe a little bit here on the bottom. It's all, he's all chin, do you see? So um, that's design, okay? That has uh, that that's more about design principles than anything else. But the construction, do you see that? You could even see already. You could see the Bridgman stuff right in there. You could see all that Bridgman stuff, the planes of the head, and the way that that all that stuff. It's already there, okay? So. Um, yeah, so there. See, you, I, I, I'm even drawing the planes and all these things going on here. Because that's what it takes to draw. Uh, to, to draw in the, 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 you know, characters. Uh, so I, I, I'll link to uh, my design articles so you can take a look at them. I explain it using stick figures. So it's not like a, you know, it's not complicated. I make it as simple as possible. But if you want to learn to draw naturalistic and then push it, then study anatomy, construction, figure drawing, ideally buy the Bridgman books, copy every single drawing from cover to cover in the Bridgman books, and by the time you're at the other end, you're going to have a better understanding of all of these guys. Uh, you'll be able to understand where they're coming from, why they're constructing the stuff the way they're constructing it, etc., etc. It's going to help so much. It's going to take away the mystery because you're going to be able to do it just like them. Because this, oh, and this giant thing, that's a total Bridgman muscle group. You're going to understand all these muscles when you copy 
abridgment. I guarantee it. Because you're copying it. And then when you have something to draw, you just have the abridgment books open. And you just have them as a guide when you're drawing your own stuff. Okay? So, I hope that this clarifies some of the things that I'm talking about when uh, I say copy and I say uh, study anatomy and construction and figure drawing and all these things. I still think that you also need to go to figure drawing class and apply what you know to what you see. So because what, what figure drawing does is that it helps you see what it looks like in real life so that you could have other options besides the Bridgman options fall upon. Um, uh, you'll see how light actually works on an actual body that isn't a big muscular chiseled body. And that's going to help you draw uh, a lot more varied body shapes and people than just big giant muscle, muscle, muscular guys and women. Especially women because they're not all big muscles. They're not all chiseled and muscular. And when you go to figure drawing, you you see what the shapes look like when they aren't all chiseled out and they're a lot softer. But anyway, figure drawing, very, very, very important. Trust me, it helps a ton. A ton. Um, this, uh, if, you, if you want to ask me any other questions, if you want to know a little bit more about, uh, if, uh, if you want to see me draw something, if you have other questions you want me to go deeper on it, into, um, ask away. Uh, just just let me know however just just be aware that uh, my patrons are over at patreon the link is below it's right here my, the, my patrons get first dibs on me answering all the questions so if you want to have my your question answered uh, sooner than later become a patron over on my patreon uh, over uh, on, on patreon there you will also get this artwork you'll get it uh, you could download it as as high res jpegs you could also get the psd file of this file if you're uh, at a, a certain level you will also get any artwork that i do during the month uh you can get an ad maybe on a video i will uh advertise your site and put your website there uh there's a lot of other rewards Go ahead and check out the rewards. Uh, you will also see these videos long before everybody else does. Patrons get the videos right away. They don't. Uh, before I even release them to the public, they get to see it first. Uh, and at any level. So I mean, if you just uh, put down a dollar, if you if you're a patron for a dollar, you're gonna get all the videos right away. There's a ton of videos already there. There's a bunch of secret videos already there. Uh, so when you become a patron, you can watch those too. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I hope, again, this has been helpful. And um, I'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye.